Welcome back to RacketStringTips.com. This is Pat. Let's get right into it. We're going to go over my top five multi-filament tennis strings and then we're going to take those and compare them to um, a list that I comprised and find out string bed stiffness. We're going to look at um, tension loss. We're also going to look at energy potential and we're going to take that and we're going to compare them to my five top to see how they did. And this is also going to be something that um, can help you to choose the right multi-filament string and it's not just by what you read on the back of a tennis um, stringing uh, it's not what you're going to read on the back of a tennis package where it, it just gives you some arbitrary numbers this is going to be based on research and it's going to be based on comparative research so you can actually compare one brand's multi-filament to another multi-filament of another brand and you can um, use the same um, reference point. So that's going to be, um, you're going to want to stay tuned for that and at the end I'll go ahead and tell you where you can do your own research on these strings as well. So alright, let's get right into it. My top five. Okay, Technofiber NRG2. That's always been a favorite of mine. Uh, that's generally with Technofiber I do, it's kind of, for me it's always felt like it's a little bit more of a rubbery feel than some of the other strings. So generally what I'll do is I will pre-stretch my Technofiber string um, to give it a little bit more stiffness um, and so forth and take out some of that potential uh, string loss, tension loss that I'll, I'll initially get. So generally, um, so that's one of my top five. These are not in any specific order. I'm just giving you my five t top multifilament strings. Okay, next one. I'm sure a lot of people have this on their list. Wilson NXT. Not not Wilson NXT Control, Wilson NXT Power, just Wilson NXT. I've used this for many years. It's it's a proven winner. It's been around for a long time. It's easy to string. It performs well. Uh, the I, I get a lot of power off that string, a lot of control. Uh, for a synthetic gut string, you can't go wrong with that. So Wilson NXT. And later we'll talk about gauges a little bit as far as am I looking at 16 gauge or 17 gauge I'm just giving you a general with my five top so um, later on when we go into specifics we're going to actually compare 16 and 17 gauges as well okay next one Yonix 850 I like the Yonix string that one's been around for a while um, it has a little bit of I feel like it, it's kind of an oily string so generally when I string that I'll, I'll clean the clamps afterwards um, but it feels like a pretty soft string and so again um, some, it, it's pretty crisp uh, I like that one in the 16 gauge next one Babolat Excel um, I, I've, I use this one a little bit um, I don't think the price point is as good as some of the other ones uh, but it's it just kind of fills in my top five um, it, it, I think it kind of goes along. It kind of feels like the, the next one I'm going to say, which is Wilson Sensation. I like that because it, it doesn't, um, it, it seems like it's a little stiffer than NXT and um, it gives me a little bit more control. I don't feel like I lose as much tension with that one and the price point on that is much better than you know some of the other multi-filaments. For under ten dollars that's a really good one. So um, and I think the XL is kind of like in that uh, in that range as well. So as you can tell, the five that I just went over, a lot of my opinions are based on me choosing those strings, right? It's kind of how they feel for me, how they are for stringing. Um, you know, I've had success with them. My customers have uh, liked those strings and felt that they've performed well. But if I'm going to be comparing my string with something that you've recommended or if I'm trying to compare one of my strings with maybe another one or I want something that's comparable but a little bit better in one area or the other how am I going to do that? Well what we're going to do is we're going to look at controlled lab tests and um, in, these, in these specific tests of, of, uh, of these strings um, they control this, 
the situation because if I do, if I string a racket on my machine on a certain date and then I put a meter on it to test the string bed stiffness and then you and then you at home string a ra that same um, string in your racket on your machine you're going to also get a reference point reference tension on that machine but they're not going to be the same and we're not going to be able to actually compare that I guess I'll go ahead and tell you now where, where I found the resource you might have already uh, checked this out Tennis Warehouse, um, it's actually under the Tennis Warehouse University part of the site, and it will break down all of the strings that they've tested, and they've tested under controlled situations, and basically what they've done is they will take, um, they'll, they'll take the string, they'll do a test, um, they'll get some readings of right after it's been strung, then they'll get some readings with a ball impact, and so that way they can that way you can use that number and then compare that to another string that they've reviewed and then you can actually do a comparison. It doesn't matter if it's a different brand or not, you can actually get um, specific numbers. And we're going to go ahead and go through that. So let me go ahead and get my screen share going here and we'll get right into it. Alright, so you know what my five top picks were and so now what we're going to do is we're going to actually look at all of the multi-filaments. What I did was I, I created a little spreadsheet where I put all of the multi-filament strings that I was able to find um, on uh, on their site that they've reviewed. Um, of course, not all of them are going to be on. There's going to be some new ones, but I think they continue to update that, and um, it, it it seems like a great reference. So let's go ahead and get into it. We'll kind of go from the top here. Alpha Gut 2000. So the numbers I'm looking at are <clears throat> the string bed stiffness and the tension loss and then the spin potential now the spin potential basically what that is it's going to be the um, how the main strings will kind of once the impact once the ball impacts the string it moves the strings a bit and then their ability to go right back into place um, that's going to be what's going to be creating your spin, right? That, you know, we don't really say that certain strings actually, I mean, that's kind of been a misnomer saying that, oh yeah, this string, because it's a hexagon or a square, is going to generate more spin. It's been proven that that's kind of just a myth that really um, all of those different things, the composites of the strings, really, really don't create spin. What creates spin is the ability of the string to, to start from point A, make it, the ball makes impact, and then its ability to then um, propel and then go back to that, uh, that place. So, so that's what's going to create spin. And of course, the way that you, the, the angle that you actually hit the, uh, the ball with your racket, that's going to be able to create spin. And the way that your, your hand moves through air, that all creates spin. The actual string itself does not create spin. I know that's a, it's a controversial thing, but once you start reading a little bit more into technical uh, tennis books, that's that's kind of what you're going to find. So, those are the numbers I'm going to be looking at. And then there's also a fourth number. It's uh, energy, and that's its ability to actually create energy, right? So when the ball hits a, hits the racket and hits the strings, the ability of how much energy is the racket or the, the, the strings able to put back on the ball shooting it out, right? So if a racket is strung looser or has, um, has a multi-filament string or, or something that pockets the ball better, those are going to project the ball a lot uh, with a lot more energy, right? That's what we call, that's what we kind of call power, right? If you have a tighter string bed, uh, generally you're going to say you have more control, right? Because it's the, the strings are stiffer and they are not going to be um, there's not going to be as much energy propelled off of the uh, the strings and so you're you're going to be able to uh, you, you feel like you have more control over the strings right so those are the things that we're going to be looking at all right so let's look at some of these I was actually quite surprised in some of these um, that uh, yeah well let's just get into it so um, I also put the prices down of each so we can kind of look at, you know, comparatively, is it worth spending, let's say, $20 on a string or 
sometimes you can get the same performance out of seven dollar string so let's let's check that out so let's get right into it all right alpha gut 2000 16 gauge uh, spring string bed stiffness 159 tension loss 17 percent spin potential 3.1 okay now I have a number of them in on here and when I found that they've uh, given a, a, a diagnostic on both the 16 and 17 gauge, I'll list them both because I really want to see some comparisons between the same string in a 16 gauge and the same string in a 17 gauge. So um, uh, let me see some other ones. I'll kind of go down the list here. I'm not going to read them all. I will go ahead and put this list on um, a link to it on my um, on my video and also on my uh, website. And again, if you go to my website, racketstringtips.com, you can sign up for a newsletter and then you'll get, uh, I send out, a, right now it's a monthly newsletter, but I'll probably start doing a weekly newsletter, hopefully. Okay, so um, one, let's see, one that was really, so out of all the multi-filaments I looked at, the one that had the stiffest string bed was Head FXP, okay? And uh, the tension loss, however, was 26%. So it's going to lose quite a bit. Generally, multi-filaments will generally lose about 10 to 15. That, that, that's like, if, if you can get a string with 10 to 15% tension loss, that's pretty good. Natural gut, of course, keeps its tension the most. And polyester string loses the tension the most. So just to keep that in reference. But um, head F FXP, if you look at the 16 gauge, you have a string bed stiffness of 194. If you string it with the 17 gauge, the, the stiffness goes down to a 163. You're still losing 22 pounds of, uh, I mean 22 um, percent, and you have a 4.5 um, string bed stiffness. So that's actually not too bad. Um, if I look at the strings which I actually uh, chose in my top five, let's say Wilson NXT. So I, I go down and I go look at them. I look at my Wilson NXT. Okay, so if I look at the 16 gauge, it uh, string bed stiffness is 174. I'm I'm losing 20% on that, and uh, 3.9 is the uh, the spin potential. And again, I, I guess I should give you a reference here. So the, the spin spin potential goes up to about five point something, just be, goes up to like six, and then. Um, goes down, of course, to zero if there is no spin potential, uh, which would be very rare. Um, and um, so you can see that that's not too bad. 3.9 is not too bad. And 20%, okay, I can deal with that. But what I was really surprised in, because usually I'll actually like a 17 gauge better, but in this case, you can see that stringing it at 17 gauge, um, it's the string bed is not as stiff. And it loses three more pounds, but look what happens to the um, the spin potential. It goes down to a 2.0. So actually, you would think that a thinner string, right, has more spin because there's a little bit more room between the strings, and it can generate maybe a little bit more spin that way. But in this case, the 17, the 16 gauge actually can create more spin. All right. So if we look at another one here, this is. Um, one, like, okay, if I have a green on here, what I did was I highlighted the green if it had high strings, uh, the high numbers as far as string bed stiffness and low tension loss and uh, um, uh, a high uh, spin potential and then a high uh, ball impact uh, generating uh, power. So that's kind of how I, how I mark those. And if, it was, if it's red, that means that it was low or poor in that area. So Weiss Cannon Explosive, which um, loses 25% string uh, tension. Uh, Wilson NXT Control, which also is, is a fairly expensive string. It's up there at the same price as Wilson NXT. But look at this, 31% 31, uh, 31 tension loss. I mean, that's, that's low. And then under 90 for the uh, power potential. So I probably wouldn't recommend that string. You know, if somebody says, hey, you know, uh, I like Wilson NXT, is there anything cheaper that, you know, still gives me good power and control? Well, you know, I can look at that and kind of look at some prices. I can look at some prices and go, you know what, let's look at Prince Premier Control at $9 a set. 
in the 16, I have 158 uh, stiffness, only losing 18%, and um, spin potential 5.4. That might be a good choice. And actually, if you look at the difference between 16 and 17, not too much. But I have more, more uh, spin potential with the 16 gauge. So then you can kind of reference that. Um, you can go all, all through these and kind of do your own analysis of like, you know, price compared to performance and tension loss. You know, I might stay away from the tension loss above 23, 24%, knowing that I can find a comparable performing string that only loses maybe 15%. Look at head velocity. I really, I don't, I haven't spent too much time with this string, but it, it appears that um, at the 17 gauge with the 153 st string bed stiffness only losing 15 pounds and a 5.5 string bed I mean a 5.5 um, uh, spin potential that, that's a that's a winner I mean if you look at Ashaway dynamic right um, you know the price isn't too bad 1375 but look at this string bed stiffness it's not very stiff at 127 and it loses 30 percent yeah, probably going to stay away from that one. Um, you know, so you can kind of compare all these strings, and this is a way for you to maybe learn a little bit about each of them, and um, you're able to take that comparable string from another brand, mix it up, or if somebody comes to you and they have a specific string that they've been playing with, you can look at the numbers and go, you know what, I have this string which performs a little bit better in this area, and depending on what you're looking for. So I hope that was helpful. Um, so again, these are my five top multi-filament picks. Technofiber NRG2, Wilson NXT, Wilson Sensation, Yonix 850, Tour, and then Babylon Excel. And I've taken uh, the controlled lab tests by Tennis Warehouse and looked at all of the different characteristics and made comparative uh, suggestions. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Please leave a comment or suggestion, and we'll see you next time.